Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In our previous video, I talked about one of the five depth areas of the civil PE exam, geotechnical. And in this week's video, I will be reviewing in detail the construction depth portion of the PE exam to help you decide if this might be the right option for you. This episode is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exam since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. There are five different areas that you can choose when taking the PE Civil Exam, which are number one, PE Civil Geotechnical, number two, PE Civil Construction, number three, PE Civil Structural, number four, PE Civil Transportation, and number five, PE Civil Water Resources and Environmental. Now, remember that the PE Civil Exam is a breadth and depth examination. The breadth segment, typically known as the morning section, covers topics from all areas of civil engineering. However, the depth segment, typically known as the afternoon section, focuses more closely on a single area of practice, like for example, construction engineering. So what is construction engineering? A construction engineer is concerned with the management of engineering projects, including planning, in control of cost, time, and quality. This field is a multiple discipline area which demands knowledge about the business, the economy, computer applications, constructability, construction equipment and methods, decision and risk analysis, engineering management, law, safety, and productivity. I know, it's a lot. So here are a few things to note about the civil construction PE exam. The exam is computer-based. It is a closed book with electronic references. The NCAAS PE Civil Reference Handbook is included in the exam along with the design standards. Examinees have nine hours to complete the exam, which contains 80 questions. The nine hour time includes a tutorial and an optional scheduled break. The exam uses both International System of Units, or SI, and the U.S. Customary System, or USCS. The exam is developed with questions that will require a variety of approaches and methodologies, including design, analysis, and application. Now, examples of the knowledge areas are not exclusive or exhaustive, but this is what you can expect to be tested on in this PE exam. Project planning, such as quantity takeoff methods, cost estimating, and project schedules. Means and methods, such as construction loads, construction methods, and temporary structure facilities. Soil mechanics, such as lateral earth pressure, soil consolidation, effective and total stresses. Structural mechanics, such as dead and live loads, trusses, bending, for example, moments and stresses, as well as shear. Hydraulics and hydrology, such as open channel flow and stormwater collection and drainage. Geometrics, such as basic circular curve elements, for example, middle ordinate, length, chord, radius, and basic vertical curve elements. Materials, such as soil classification and boring log interpretation. Soil properties, for example, strength, permeability compressibility, phase relationships, and concrete, for example, non-reinforced or reinforced. Site development, such as excavation and embankment, for example, cotton fill. Construction site layout and control and temporary and permanent soil erosion 
and sediment control. Earthwork construction and layout, such as excavation and embankment, again, cut and fill. Borrow pit volumes and site layout and control. I'm having some flashbacks from college courses here, some of them I didn't do so well on. Estimating quantities and costs, such as quantity takeoff methods, cost estimating and cost analysis for resource selection. Construction operations and methods, such as lifting and rigging, crane stability, dewatering and pumping, and equipment operations, for example, selection, production, and economics. Scheduling, such as construction sequencing, activity time analysis, and cost trade-off. Material quality control and production, such as material properties and testing, for example, soils, concrete, asphalt, weld and bolt installation and quality control process, also known as QAQC. Temporary structures, such as construction loads, codes and standards, formwork, false work and scaffolding, and shoring and reshoring. And finally, health and safety, such as OSHA regulations and hazard identification and abatement, safety management, and statistics and zone and public safety. Of course, safety being the most important thing for us as professional engineers. Still not sure if this exam is for you? Let's look at the passing rates for the civil construction computer-based PE exam. As of December 2021, the PE civil construction depth exam has a 53% passing rate for first-time takers and a 37% passing rate for repeat takers. You can find those numbers on the NCWS website. And let's compare them to the PE civil geotechnical exam that we discussed in the previous episode. That exam had a 54% pass rate for first-time takers and a 30% pass rate for repeat takers. You can find a link to all of those rates in the description of this video as well as our last video. Hopefully this information will give you a better idea of what to expect on the civil construction computer-based PE exam. Remember to consider your experience and interests and check the passing rates when deciding which depth section you should take for the PE exam. Lastly, I would strongly recommend to also preview the exam by doing some exam prep courses that offer a variety of live and on-demand classes. Looking at the previews of the practice exams for each discipline might help jog your memory of which areas have questions that are easier for you to prepare for. For some great courses, visit our sponsor, PPI, at ppi2pass.com to see all of the options available for PE exam prep. I hope you found this review helpful. In upcoming videos, I will review other civil engineering disciplines depth sections of the PE exams. And if you have any questions, fire away in the comments and I will respond to you. Until then, I'll see you next week. <music>